Hello everyone. Today in this lecture, I am going to discuss about the next organ in GI tract or the alimentary canal is the esophagus. So this is also called as food pipe or gullet, and this is a muscular hollow tube that extends from the lower part of the neck up to the upper part of the abdominal cavity. So before you watch this video, I will suggest you that I already been made. the various part of gi tract that uh, the mouth the accessory organ teeth tongue and the pharynx so you can have basic idea about the system and this video can be easily correlated with the previous ones so please watch all this video now let's see what is the esophagus where it is situated and what all walls are there in the esophageal layer and what is the relation with the other organ that are situated nearby it so here you can see the esophagus is a muscular tube uh, that extends from the lower part of the neck or you can also see here the basic landmark because we already discuss about the pharynx so it comes below the pharynx so in pharynx we discussed that it has three part three parts that is the nasopharynx oropharynx and the laryngopharynx so this tube esophagus extends from the lower part of laryngopharynx that is the landmarks are uh, the lower part of this crico cricoid cartilage this is the part of larynx this green one and posteriorly it is correspond with the c6 vertebra cervical 6 vertebra so it extends from this uh this part the lower part of the laryngopharynx and uh then it enters vertically and uh, descend down in the thorax region uh where the space which lies between the two lungs is the mediastinum okay so it enters into the mediastinum part here it is the mediastinum part where it enters superiorly and pos posteriorly then it goes down and at the level of t 10th that is thoracic vertebra it pierces the diaphragm this is the muscular partition between the thorax and the abdomen so here it pierces this diaphragm at the level of t 10th uh, by an opening which is called as esophageal hiatus okay from here it pierces the diaphragm and it goes down in the abdominal cavity here okay and in the upper part of this abdomen it ends at the level of t 11th thoracic 11th level where it is attaches with the uh, part of the stomach the upper part of stomach that is called cardiac okay so the esophagus extends from the lower part of laryngopharynx and goes down up to the upper part of abdominal cavity where it is attaches with the cardiac part of stomach so it is a collapsed structure because its anterior and posterior wall opposes each other and when uh, we ingest a food and when it goes back of our mouth and it reaches in pharynx then uh, when it enters into the esophagus then only it opens to allow the food bolus to goes down descend down and enter in the stomach so when the food is passing through this tube only the tube opens and when there is no food then it remain collapsed structure okay so it is a 25 cm long tube that extends from the neck that is uh, in the cervical region then it goes down and when it enters into the thoracic region then it forms the thoracic part of the esophagus and when it enters into the abdominal part it forms the abdominal uh, part of the esophagus so basically depending on where it is situated it has three part cervical part thoracic and abdominal part now let's see the wall of esophagus so i already made an video of wall of gi tract that basically four layers are there so i'm not going in so much detail you can watch that video but uh, just giving a outline of this layers so as it forms a hollow lumen 
so in the innermost to this lumen is the mucosa so mucosa is made up of non keratinized stratified squamous lining because uh, it can be damaged by the uh, the food particles so it is a multiple layer of fat flat uh, squamous cells so it is non keratinized layer and deep to this is the submucosa which contains various mucosal gland blood vessels and deep to this is the muscularis layer but muscularis layer is uh, quite different in this esophageal part because what is the function of esophagus is to allow the food bolus to move down and down and enter into the stomach so this is called deglutition or swallowing so according to its function uh, the muscular layer in the upper one third part is made up of skeletal fibers skeletal muscles that it, it means uh, it is completely under our control so it is made up of voluntarily muscles skeletal muscle fibers and in middle part the muscularis layer is made up of both uh, muscle fibers that is smooth muscle fibers and skeletal muscles partly it is controlled and partly it cannot be controlled okay and the lower most part the lower third part is made up of smooth muscle lining which is completely involuntary in control so this is the third lining from inner that is muscularis uh, which is made up of different type of muscle fibers skeletal plus smooth and the outermost is called adventitia instead of serosa because the outermost lining of uh, this esophagus is made up of connective tissue which is not covered by any mesothelial or epithelial lining so that is called adventitia okay so these are the four layers from inner to outer mucosa submucosa muscularis and adventitia now let's see what all two sphincters are there in the esophagus so one is lying at the topmost part in the upper end where it is attaches with this uh, laryngopharyngeal part and one is present at the lower part lower end of this tube so this upper sphincter is called upper esophageal sphincter or the cricopharyngeal sphincter because uh, we already read about this cricopharyngeal muscle uh, this is the inferior constrictor muscle in the laryngopharynx or in the pharyngeal part uh, this is the outer circular muscle so this cricopharyngeal muscles extends downward and form a sphincter like structure in this upper part of esophagus so that's why it is called cricopharyngeal sphincter or upper esophageal sphincter and this sphincter allows the food bolus to enter from the pharynx into the esophagus and the next sphincter which is present down or at the lower end is the lower esophageal sphincter and this prevents the backflow of the food content from stomach toward this esophagus so these are the two sphincters upper esophageal sphincter and the lower esophageal sphincter at top level and at the end level so next we'll deal about the four constrictors uh, yes the esophagus is a vertical tube that extend from below the neck and it goes down up to the level of superior part of the abdomen but there are four areas where this tube become constricted so the first level is c6 that is cervical sixth level where the cricopharyngeal muscle uh, or the cricopharyngeal sphincter is forming here and uh, the second constrictor is at the level of thoracic fourth vertebra where this arc of aorta crosses the esophagus and the third constrictor at the level of thoracic fifth vertebra where this left bronchus crosses the esophagus and the last constrictor is at the level of thoracic 10th vertebra where uh, this esophagus pierces the diaphragm yes so these are the four constrictor where the esophagus is narrow next we'll discuss the relationship with the other organ uh, to this esophagus but i'm not going in detail we can just discuss according to the structure you can see here like uh, you can see here this is the esophagus the red tube this is the esophagus so anteriorly in the cervical region there is a trachea posterior to that is the vertebra and on either side there is a uh, lobe of the thyroid gland 
in the cervical or the neck region and the thoracic duct is also present in the left side and this duct is the vessel uh, which forms the part of lymphatic system now uh, in the thoracic region also you can see here anteriorly there is a trachea and the left bronchus posteriorly vertebral column is there vertebra is there and along with that thoracic aorta is also there and thoracic duct is also present in the posterior aspect of this esophagus okay yes it is present in uh, left side in the cervical region of esophagus but uh, in the thorax region the duct come behind this esophagus okay posteriorly and on either side right and left side is the right and left lung with the pleura okay so these are the relation with the different organ which are associated with this esophagus so here in this lecture we have discussed uh, the gi tracts next part is the esophagus which is a muscular tubular collapsed structure 25 cm long that extends from uh, the laryngopharynx that is below the neck and reaches up to the cardiac portion of the stomach and we have discussed the wall of esophagus and different relation with the organ and constrictors as well as the sphincters thank you